Hello, hello, everybody, man. I got to tell you, I, you know, usually I'm like uh, introducing a guest and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the best guest ever. And I'm just going to scream it all out, you know, on the Skits Fun House. But we're not actually doing the Skits Fun House. We're just doing something a little more chill, but exciting at the same time. So let me just welcome my guest, Mr. Ink Spots. How are you doing today? Doing great. How's it going, everybody? Glad to be here to check this out. Cool, cool. Let me just uh, take care of this right quick. Hey, everybody, just go on out there and sign up for Skits Origin. This is a book that I actually did 12 years ago. It was when I first was getting interested in doing comics. I, I set upon actually just doing it because that's the best way to learn. You just do it, right? Right, Ink Spots? If you want to learn something, you do it. That's it. Do it a yeah. lot of times. <laughs> yeah, so basically that's what I did. I went ahead and uh, I did... Uh, three floppy comics, and then I did a bunch of web comics as well. So all that stuff is done, and it's being collected into this book. It's 87 pages. It's completely done, and uh, we're going to be campaigning it soon. And that's something that we're going to be doing here for now on is when we campaign a project, it's actually going to be done. So as soon as the campaign's done, the book will be done, and then we just start going into printing and all that sort of stuff so cool. that's what we got going on so go on over there and sign up for it you get five dollars off the book for early sign up and it should be fun so uh my special guest today ink spots inks now the, the reason why i um i chose you for this this is my first time i'm, I'm gonna be trying to do this a bit i think you know i i kind of it's hard just sitting there painting and drawing and talking at the same time especially uh with my process as you'll see in this video it's like you know you you do a little bit and then you wait for it to dry you do a little bit and then you hit it with the you know the blow dryer and then you wait a little bit so it's not really something that's very conducive for a live stream so what i did is i recorded the whole process and uh, we're just going to run through it real quick awesome yeah, I don't, I don't think people uh, realize how much brain power it takes when you're uh, painting too. Like you're trying to, your brain is so focused, it's hard to uh, carry on a conversation at the same time. So. It is terribly difficult, terribly difficult. I want to say hello to a few people. We've got a few people showing up. we got Sim in the chat. Hey, Sim, thanks for showing up, man. What's up, Appreciate Sim? You. Appreciate you. we got Devil Flyer. I appreciate you for being here. Really appreciate it. Glad to finally catch up with you live. Hey, I'm glad to have you here live. So thank you for showing up. Hopefully we'll have some more people show up. We'll see. We're going against Fraga right now. So anyway, yeah. we'll, we'll just see how it goes. I am. Nah, whatever. Fraga. <laughs> so let me, uh, let me share this thing here. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Share. Boom. Okay. So what we're doing here, I'm actually starting work on the next book. And I don't know if you know this. Oh, oh, hold on a sec. We got another person just showed up. Black Star on the road. She's saying hey from the road. We'll see you soon. Uh, maybe she can pop in later. But uh, she's uploading her video for later tonight. Everyone go check her out. It's over at Verse Films Production. She's doing a video a night during uh, the month of October. It's called Screamtober. So go check that out. Nice. Yep. So what we're doing here is the next book of skits is actually a side project. It's going to be a little quicker and it's only 48 pages. And what it is, is it's a Josephine story. And there's a reason why I had to do this. You know, it, it's before we get into skits, the sun book two, we actually have to tell this story before we get into there. So this is just a little side journey, a little side uh, book that we're going to do. And it's going to be a, a little quicker and a little more fun than just the regular skit stuff that I do. This one we're doing all analog. I mean, that's something that I want to do. I just want to do analog uh, painting, cut and paste, uh, drawing, everything you can do. And that's exactly what we're going to show you here today is that process. How, how I came up with the process that I'm going to be doing on the next skits book. Cool, man. So what are you, uh, what kind of materials are you using in this? Is this uh, acrylics? Uh, I'm going to be using anything and everything. 
just throwing it at the board like it, yeah like it. it and this is something that you do uh art school high school when you're when you're trying to figure out what you want to do with something what you do is you just put down a piece of paper or a canvas and you just start throwing stuff at it and see what you can get you know over the years obviously i've kind of collected a way of doing things that's um, you know, I, I guess my way of doing things, but yeah. whatever, you know, you find, you, you find what you can, you learn stuff and then you put it all together. But what we're doing right here is I'm just going to start you right off right here. What I'm doing is I just took some random pieces of paper off the floor of the studio and I taped them together. That's, that's how we got started <laughs> with this. That's about as random as he can get right there. I'm serious. Hey, man, you just got to get started with just like, okay, here's some paper. I'll tape it together, and nice. we'll just go from there. And what I did is after I taped it, uh, I put some matte medium on it. Uh, I just put it all over the entire canvas, or the entire piece of paper, just to kind of seal it, you know? Okay, okay, cool. And that's something that I like to do a lot. A lot of times I'll do pencils on paper or ink on paper, and then I'll seal it with um, matte medium. Now, how do you get uh, keep your pencils from smearing uh, when you put the matte medium on? Do you spray it, or yeah, you just you go with it? No, you can definitely spray it, but usually I'm using a hard pencil. Okay, if you like use a, a hard pencil, yeah, like, or something. yeah, exactly, like a okay. 2H or a 4H or something like that then you don't have to worry about it. Where, when you really have to worry about it is when you got inks. Yeah. Uh, if, if it's not the greatest ink, it will smear. And even if it is really good ink, it'll still smear. Even though they say it, it won't, it will. Yeah, I use a 2B and so that <laughs> there's no way to brush over that <laughs> without just a smudgy mess. <laughs> well, well, here's another thing too, is you got to remember that it's actually... It's an underdrawing. It's not meant to be perfect, and you ain't going to see it at the end, so it doesn't yeah. really matter, you know? Yeah. So what I do is, you know, just throw down some matte medium. If you need to, you can spray it. You can fix it. You know, get you a good fixative and spray it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem you'll have there is it's on your first pass of matte medium, it kind of beads up because it's, you know, protecting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so what you want to do is, uh, I usually have like gallons of matte medium and I'll just leave them out uh, with like the lid cracked on them so that the uh, water evaporates from it so it becomes really thick. Nice. Okay. And nice. and then I'll use that to go over that sort of thing and it won't, it won't puddle up or anything because of how thick it is. Yeah. So. Cool. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, that's that. Let, let me get started here. Let me show you where I'm going with this. Okay, so what I got here, and this is something that I like to do a lot, is I like to prepare uh, the surface that I'm going to be doing work on. And what I'll do is I got like old paper, old books, uh, clippings, I mean, just whatever. And I'll literally just start, um, I'll just start uh, painting them down and stuff like that, you know. And what I use is a... Uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, a, a palette knife, basically, to just brush it on there and uh, make sure that there's no bubbles underneath it. You still there, Inks? Oh like yeah, it. sorry, my dog was barking, so I just muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So do you you glue those down with the matte medium? Again, yeah. So or? okay. Yeah. So you see me? I'm putting down the matte medium with basically a spackling knife of some sort, you know, that you get for like ten cents at the at Home Depot or Lowe's yeah. or something. And I'm just laying down the matte medium, and then I put matte medium on the actual paper there. And. Okay. Yeah, so then I, I use that to glue everything down. So you end up basically with a big, thick, matte medium surface at the end. That's my favorite thing you do is the collage <clears throat> part of it. I, I love that. It looks really cool at the end. Yeah, you know, I, I think th this is something that people tend to be kind of scared with, I think, is um, they put down, they, they, they see a blank piece of paper, Mm -hmm. And they're afraid to put marks and stuff on it. And 
the way I always got past that when I was younger is I just make all sorts of marks. I'd throw ink on it. I'd paint over it. And then I'd have a piece of paper that was already kind of messed up and it didn't really matter what I did to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think that's really important, especially if you're an early artist, you know, because the big piece of white paper can kind of be a little daunting. Now this matte medium dries pretty fast too, doesn't it? Uh, well, you see me hitting it there yeah. with a blow dryer. It takes a while, you know, like okay. I can do, and this is oh, right okay. here, right here. Uh, what happened is there's some bubbles underneath it. Uh huh. And what I'm trying to do is actually get, I'm cutting the paper and I'm squeezing out the bubbles and then I'm putting matte medium back in there and then I'm just going to glue it back down. Okay. And it, that just makes sure that I have a nice flat surface to work with. And it takes a while for the matte medium to dry. Like you can do a few layers and then you just kind of got to go away and let it dry because underneath everything it starts to dry. Now, what I did right here is I wanted to see what, what it would be like if I put drawings on tracing paper and then uh -huh. matte, medi matte mediumed it down. I wanted to see what it would look like, and that's what I'm doing right here. Have you ever tried anything like that? Uh, no, I've never tried that. That's pretty cool. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm doing all of my uh, thumbnails for Josephine on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And instead of... Um, taking like a, uh, a projector and projecting it on the piece of paper and tracing in the shapes and then going from there, I thought, why don't I just put a piece of tracing paper on my monitor and trace it, you know, trace my drawings. Yeah. And then go to the piece of, you know, the, pa the, the paper that I've already prepared and glue it down with the matte medium. Now, how well did that work really well? Yeah, it worked fine. Because well, that is a great idea. I never thought about that for a transfer before. That's pretty cool. Well, what what I did is I actually, I drew it uh, in reverse. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I traced it in reverse. And then I flipped it and I put it down. That way uh, the pencils get sealed underneath. On and you the don't other have side. To, yeah. yeah, it's on the bottom side. And you don't have to worry about messing it up. You know, when, cool. when, you're, yeah. when you're putting the matte medium down and stuff. Oh, you're already giving me ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Oh, that's, that's yeah, because uh, of my book, I'm going to try uh, to go with a lot of traditional. So uh, that is a great process for transferring a drawing. I might just steal that from you. <laughs> oh, well, hey, I, I got more. Uh, there's other ways of doing it, too. Uh, you can take your drawings say you're doing drawings in the computer or you're just doing drawings on paper, but you don't want to uh, uh, use the pieces that you've done on paper. You don't want to ruin them. So what you yeah. do is you just scan them in or you make copies of them. Okay. And what you can do, and this is probably the process I'll, I'll get to the end and I'll tell you a little bit more, but most likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumbnails and I'm going to print them out at 11 by 17 size. Mm -hmm. And then on but I'm going to print them out on a copy machine where they got the toner, yeah. you know, the copy toner. And I'm going to, I have to do it in reverse. So when I put it down on the paper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take acetone and brush acetone on the back of the paper. And then the image that's all of that, um, that powdered toner yeah. will, will end up transferring right to your paper. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably how I'm going to end up doing it. But like I said, with this one, I was just wanting to test it and uh, see what I could come up with, you know. So I'm just trying a bunch of different stuff. But this is definitely a process that you can use right here. Yeah. And another thing, I think I'll get to this here in a little bit. We'll just keep kind of playing here. So again, you know, you got to dry it, you got to wait, you know, and then I'll go away for 30 minutes and let it dry by itself before I come back and do more. How many layers of medium? Oh, you're just adding more to the collage. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just testing stuff. Like, I got a few things. I got like this 
spot here where I'm testing something. I got something here where I'm testing something. Gotcha. So I'm just testing stuff all over this piece of paper. And this is really um, when you're a fine artist and you're looking for new ways of doing things, that's definitely something that you would do. You would just kind of try stuff and see what happens. Now, now do you do shows and stuff? Or you, do you do fine art and do gallery shows or anything like that? Yeah, I've oh, um, okay. cool. I've actually uh, been showing in galleries since I was in college. Very so, cool. Yeah. Let me, let me just kind of see if I can. Nah. Anyway, I'll just tell you what I'm doing right here. So right here I got to a part where I was happy with what I was looking at and I wanted to draw over it. But the problem is, is you can't draw on straight up matte medium. Okay? Yeah, it's plastic. Exactly. So there's a, there's a process that I learned in college in illustration classes. I was an illustration major. Mm. And the cool thing about illustration majors is they actually teach you a lot of traditional techniques, different stuff that uh, illustrators use so that they can do things quick and easy. Mm -hmm. And something that they teach you so you can draw over matte medium, what you do is you take some matte medium and you add marble dust to it, okay? Okay. Now, marble dust is what's used in gesso. You know, you use gesso and that's what you prepare a surface with. But with gesso, you can't see through it. It's white. Yeah. Right? So what you do is you just take some matte medium and you mix. Uh, I'm going to say it's probably about a quarter to a third of marble dust with your matte medium. Maybe a little less than that. Maybe a little more. Matters how how liquefied your matte medium is. And like I said, mine's kind of dry. So, you know, yeah. less or more. But just experiment with it. And what that does is you paint that down and then it gives you a surface that you can draw on it with any type of pencil. Gives you some grit. Exactly. And what yeah. I'm doing right here is I'm just sanding the surface because I put that stuff down and I wanted to sand it so it was nice and smooth. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing right here is I'm just sanding it down because I'm about to start drawing on it. Oh, and now I'm, what I got here is I got a stump. And I got some graphite dust. Okay. okay. And you don't I don't see that too much anymore. Yeah, you know, I've been doing drawings on here. Everyone check out the channel. Uh, I've been doing some of those on here. I've been uh, doing little creatures and stuff like that. And what that is is that's uh, part of the, the new book. There are characters that I'm developing for the book, so you can go back and check it out. But that this is exactly how I do those drawings. Cool. Yeah. So I was just like, well, let's just play around with that and see how it works. And now, now I got a pencil there, which is actually a lead pencil, just a big, thick piece of lead. Yeah. And I'm just drawing with it. So I put down some, uh, just some smudges and stuff, and now I'm starting to draw on it. And again, I'm just playing around, you know. I'm just trying to see what I can come up with, you know. So I got, you know, just playing, playing, playing. And, uh, you know, once you get something that you like, you kind of do some more with it. Now, now with that graphite dust, if you didn't like what you had put down, can you just wipe that right off the... Uh... Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. You can erase it, or you can wipe it off. Nice. Or you can just, uh, since I was doing it on the matte medium marble dust, I could just take uh, that, that sandpaper and just sand it right off if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's multiple different ways you can do, you know. And now I got an ink uh, pen, an ink brush pen. Because I, I kind of liked what I was doing. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just do some ink now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Put some ink over it and darken it up. I kind of like what's going on here. Uh, do you do much with, with traditional inks? Yeah, I actually do quite a bit. Uh with uh right now anyway i hadn't in a long time because i was mainly a uh, digital artist from probably the last 10 or 12 years uh before that i was watercolor mainly just watercolor so i've been experimenting this last uh last year just with a ton of uh, ink and graphite and 
uh, a lot of acrylic stuff. I really like acrylic, you know, so I'm trying to learn nice. uh, my the way I want to use acrylic right now. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, Devil Flyer, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you for signing up for Origins, man. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, very cool, dude. So, yeah. I, yeah. I like your, I just like how your stuff turns out. It's just uh, very uh, creative. And that's, that's the, that's what's cool. It seems like a lot of uh, comic book has come become procedural. Like you like this is I do my layouts and I do my inks and I do my yeah. colors and I think like the art part of it kind of got lost a bit. So yeah, uh, you know, and that's the I gotta tell you that's the only way that I want to do comics is I want to do it artsy. You know, I want yeah. paint, I want ink, I want I want to sling some stuff. I you know I, I just that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once I got this ink on here, I was like, okay, I got to fix it a bit, you know, I got to fix it. And so I got my spray can out and I fixed the ink so it wouldn't smear when I started laying down paint. Well, then I tried to lay down paint and I forgot. <laughs> and it I beat it up it. on you. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is fine. I mean, yeah, that's what it, what it does. And it gives kind of a cool look, you know, at the same yeah. time. But, but I was like, so now what are you using here is this a uh, liquid acrylic or yeah just acrylic paint okay and uh, a bunch of water bunch of water and acrylic and what I did to fix this problem so it doesn't do this is I just got some paint on that rag there water and paint on that rag and I just rubbed it over it you and that'll thin layer yeah just put a thin layer on it so that uh, now I can go back and paint on it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then I put a little bit more matte medium just real quick. I was like, all right, we'll just do this. <laughs> now I can go back and do like real stuff. Now, something I'm doing here, I don't know if you said that you like to work with watercolor and the acrylics and stuff. Something that I like to do a lot. And this just comes from like years of painting and experience, I think. But sometimes you can put down paint too thick, too fast. Yeah. And what I like to do is I keep a little water bottle next to the uh, canvas or paper, whatever I'm working on. Yeah, I got one of those stylus sprayers that sprays that really super fine mist, almost like an airbrush. Yeah. That's what I use. Yeah. Same. And plus you get great effects that way. Exactly. Yeah. And you Keep your paint a little wetter too, because acrylic dries so fast. So if you gotta do any kind of blending, you gotta keep it wet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's exactly what I was doing. I, I I just hit it with a water bottle. I use a big one though. Mine's like this big, and it just splatters everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just because I I want the splatter. I want you the, want the droplets. Yeah. Yeah. Happy accidents. I'm all about happy accidents. Very cool. So, so then I'm drying it again, and then I'm coming back in with some and if I don't like something I just hit it with the spray bottle and let it go away just adds to it yeah you're really getting like the watercolor aspect of the acrylics out of it that's cool yeah I find oh. that I use them a lot thicker uh, yeah I mean it, to each his own you know you just yeah. gotta find your way and do what you want to do which yeah. is weird because I was a watercolor artist, so everything was washes, but now I, I find like with the acrylics, I use them like way different because I guess maybe just the consistency of it. Hmm. I got gotcha. you. So, so here I, I decided I didn't like that bottom area, so I just painted over it with some gesso. Uh huh. And now I'm sanding the gesso down because it was pretty thick and I just wanted it to be a little softer. So. Give you a big lip right there. Is that what the the problem was, or I, I just didn't like the way it was looking. Sometimes you put stuff in. Okay, here we go. So sometimes you put stuff in and you just don't like it. So you're just yeah. like, okay, I'm just gonna heck with it. I'm just gonna paint <laughs> it out, you know. And that's all that I was doing. Now here, I I took a photograph of it and I brought it into the computer and I was like, okay, so say I have my ready paper, but I want to do a detailed piece on it you know like a detailed drawing so i was like okay well i'll just kind of scan the or take a picture of the piece put it in the computer and do a drawing over it that way i can go back to 
uh, that process that I showed you earlier where I take the tracing paper and just trace it and then yeah. put it put it down. So that's what this is right here. I'm just, you know, working in the computer like, ah, let, I need a drawing and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so now I've traced it and onto some tracing paper and then I'm just going to glue it down with the matte medium. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It's just easy ways of working, you know. I mean, these are tricks that they teach you in illustration and painting classes in, in college, really. Um, this style, actually, I think that I learned this one in the illustration class, to be perfectly honest with you. Cool. Yeah, I was poor right, white trash. I didn't go to college. <laughs> Well, hey, so was I. The only way I was able to go to art school is they gave me a free ride. I got very lucky, so I didn't yeah. have to pay for any of it. I wasn't very smart, so I didn't get, I didn't get qualified for nothing. I, I was smart, too. I, I, I wasn't smart, either. I got it on a portfolio scholarship. You know, they looked nice. at my artwork. So. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's an art school. That's how you get scholarships at an art school is by having They're, really good it's art. It's so expensive to go to art school now. It's oh, like, geez. It's, it's like, ridiculous. Uh, holy, I think one was like $380,000. Yeah. I don't even think that was for the full, full thing either. So. Yeah. I, I, I went to Savannah College of Art and Design and it, it was awesome, but there's no way I could have ever went if I had to pay for it. I think that's an advantage though, you know, because you learn all this cool stuff. I mean... Stuff that you would just have to spend years kind of figuring out on your own. You got someone there to kind of show you uh, some of the way forward with this stuff. Yeah, you know. Uh, yes, there's films. It will be on the website as soon as the website's up. That's something that we're definitely going to be doing. Cool. And also, Blackstar said, don't say that, Ink Spots. I'm sure you were... An awesome kid, I think she meant. <laughs> We're kid awesome. That's kind of that's kind of like a a, a superhero book or something. Kid awesome. You know what I used character. to paint paint with is I had uh, someone had I bought this big old thing of modeling paints at a uh, yard sale, and so that's what I would, used to use to paint was like uh, the paints that you would paint models with all the metallic paints. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oil based uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So here, what I'm doing is I'm I'm kind of working in underpainting, basically. I'm like I'm I'm preparing it so I can go in with fine, nice brushes, you know, because yeah. I, I'm just using big, uh, junky brushes that you buy for a dollar at Lowe's at this point. So that's and I, I, for some reason I, I made this one really slow, so we're gonna speed through it a little bit here. And I'm just kind of going over it with a couple of reds and blues. Now, here's actually where I made the mistake. I made a big mistake here. And I, and sometimes you do this because you're not even thinking. But I'm sitting here working on this with colored pencils. And that's fine if that's going to be your finish, you know, on top. Oh, yeah, but it's going to give you that waxy. Exactly. So it's yeah. got the wax and... I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go over this. And then I even compound it and get worse here in a minute. So <laughs> I'm just like so stupid here. You're kinda... just doing water resist, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, did it so on purpose. Up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm just sitting here going along, do 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 do, colored pencils, no big deal. Getting my red, my, my crimson red and my indigo blue going. And now I even, I'm even doing something more stupid. I'm putting gouache on top of my colored oh. pencils. Oh, wow. Now that's fine if, if I'm just gonna finish it and then I'm gonna send it out the door, take a picture of it and be done with it. But over time, this gouache will crack and peel right off of yeah. this colored pencil. So yeah, I started making some boo-boos here and I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just, I know this stuff like all the time. And for some reason I was just like, well, I'll just throw some gouache on it. Why not? It's like, 
I, it didn't even occur to me in the back of my head. I'm like, wait a minute, you know, like in a, in a minute here, you'll see what I do by accident. And then I realized what I did for some reason in my head. I, I think I'm like using acrylics right now or something. And, uh, yeah. Cause that gloss just sits on top of that plastic and you can rub it. Right yeah. On. You know what I need, what you need to do. If you're going to do colored pencils with acrylics, you do the colored pencils last and if you're going to do colored pencils and then paint over it, you need to use oils just for everyone out there. So you can learn from my mistakes here. <laughs> Definitely looks cool though. You got the look at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I'm like, I'm like, the look is, is looking awesome. You know, I, Hey, uh, devil flyer. I see what you're talking about there. Uh, uh, Clee, def <laughs> I appreciate it but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm getting the look I like like I'm getting some good colors in there everything's going nice and uh, so this is all gouache you're painting with right now yeah yeah oh wow <laughs> yeah <it's> about, <laughs> and this was all meant to be like under painting slash like some finished you know I was like yeah this is gonna look cool and then I'm gonna take it back to the to the easel and I'm going to do some splash and paint effects over it and it's going to be awesome. And it's like, yeah, that was stupid. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll, oh, here we, here we go. All right, here we go. This is, this is a good one here. We're, we're about into it. <laughs> so yeah, you know, everything's going great right here. You know, I'm like, woo, this is looking fun. This is exciting, you know awesome and uh even even worse i put ink on top of the colored pencils <laughs> I, I i just i had no idea what what i was thinking i, I was just kind of going for it and everything was looking awesome yeah you're just experimenting right now <laughs> exactly exactly but for some reason I was, I, I was experimenting without thinking and even worse I, I'm, I'm putting like ink pens on it too so then I'm like, okay, there's something I want to do here that I think is really fun. I'm going to put in a, a word balloon is what I was thinking of putting in right here. And I was putting down some paint, and then I wanted to spray it, right? Oh. And then, of course, it hit there, and it went all over the gouache area. And oh, it was just... no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you cuss right there? <laughs> no, actually. Uh, well, the funny thing was, is so I sprayed on the pink, right? That pink area because I wanted to get the runs out of it and some splatter. Uh -huh. And what happened is everything that I sprayed right there, because I used such a big spray bottle, it just sprayed all over the top of what I painted right there. And I was just like, huh, well, that's, that kind of sucks. Let me, and then I was in my head, I was thinking it was acrylic. And, and then I just sprayed it with the water bottle to get the water off of it. And it just started running. <laughs> wow. Now, couldn't you just do another layer of matte medium over that to seal, reseal it again and start over? Or uh, No, because as soon as the, the liquid hits the... Um, hits the... the uh the gouache it It'll just, just yeah. it just liquefies and goes everywhere oh, man. like you could spray it with um uh an oil fixative like uh um because um, I, I thought i've seen people it, like, like a varnish do, you can do spray it under, with a varnish i thought i've seen people do an underpainting with gouache and then go over it with acrylic bit Maybe they were doing that straight on the paper so it had a chance to kind of absorb into the... Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, remember, we're doing this all on acrylic, so it's just, yeah. like, stuck on the acrylic, you know? It's like... Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, when, when it happened, I was like, oh, what, what? I'm, I'm sitting here in my head right now just going, what happened? Let, let me just dab it. And I was like, oh, gosh, it's done. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just sitting here. I'm like, does this look cool? Does it does it look cool that her face is melting? Maybe I should just keep it. You know, that's what's going on in my head right now. And then, I, you know, here in a minute, I'm just like, yeah, this 
this ain't gonna work. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm just kind of like, ah, what, what? That was stupid. Uh, I'm like, what, what was going on in my head? I used ink and gouache on top of the wax. Now, when you do your comic pages, are you just gonna do like the full size board, or do you do like individual images and then collage them together for panels, or? Well, I'm going to be doing, uh, I do my thumbnails, right? Oh, here I am. Look at, look at this. I'm like, can I, can, can that stay? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm just like, all right, it's done. Just start just, over. Just start over. I'm going oh. back to zero. <laughs> so yeah, I was just like, all right, done, whatever. But at least so, you could just, it's like Photoshop. You just new layer. <laughs> Yeah, I still got the underpainting, right? Yeah. So I go back in, now I start doing it with acrylic. So I'm like, all right, let me do this again with acrylic. <laughs> now, do you have a process for blending your acrylics? Do you just use your finger or? Uh, I like to kind of naturally blend with, uh, with uh, like I was showing you with the, the uh, spritzer. I like to do that a lot, but if I'm doing this right here, I just mm -hmm. do thin washes, but I like to have a mid-ground, and I'll go dark from the mid-ground, and I'll go to light from the okay. mid-ground. So I'll go dark first, and then I'll come back with my lights once I get all my darks done. So you mix mostly with just just your brush strokes? You let do the mixing? or? Yeah, you know, I, I just yeah. put, it, put it down. I mean, it's... I just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, once you get a mid-tone, the mid-tone is so important. You know, yeah. you get you a good mid-tone all over the canvas. Then you can go do your darks from there, you know, using blues or browns, whatever you're going to do with your, or reds, you know, whatever you're going to do with your darks. And then once you got your darks, then you can go back in with your lights and go light. You know, what I'm doing right here is I'm starting to build the lights up. Yeah. You know? I wish I could do that. I always have to go. Uh, I have to go dark to light. I can never seem to go start with a, with a mid tone and get where I want to go. I gotta go all dark and then just slowly layer it until I get light again. Uh, yeah. That the easiest way. I mean, if you're just gonna do a simple painting, not like, not. Oh, excuse me. If you're just gonna do a simple painting, the best thing to do is. Do your drawing, like if you're just doing a straight up paint, do your drawing and then tone the entire paper with a mid-tone. You know, whatever you want the color to be, you can do it with a green or whatever, but just make it so that you're like 50% gray, basically, yeah. in your color or your mid-tone, whatever you use, browns, reds, blues, greens, whatever. And then... Once you got that, then start going in with like an indigo blue, Prussian blue, something like that, whatever you want to use. And you just start, you know, you go a little darker and then a little darker and then a little darker until you get to like dark, dark, right? But don't get like your absolute darks and don't ever use black, actually. Yeah. Except for at the very end, if you want to, for high, for accents. Yeah. Uh, mix up color to get your, your blacks and stuff like that. That's just, it, it makes the painting look a little better in my opinion. Yeah. And then once you get that, then you go from your mid-tone and you just start building your, your layers of light, you know, a little lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter until you get to bright. I mean, as you can tell, this paint right here has uh, dried, but it's, uh, you know, it's not completely light it's not light light yet you know i still gotta go back and do more <laughs> i can't believe you had to redo it <laughs> oh it it was nothing i mean it was basically it was like 30 minutes of work that just yeah. kind of like went bye bye <laughs> so you're doing laundry kind of doing your darks and your lights <laughs> yeah i would have been devastated I was like, no i quit <laughs> Well, I mean, also, Starting you, gotta, over. you gotta remember, this is just a test, you know, yeah. I didn't mean for it to actually look halfway decent, I'm just trying different stuff, you know, I, I just want to get a feeling or an idea of what I want to do for the next comic, you know. 
So your pages, are you going to go uh, like the, the full regular comic book size? Or are you going to go larger? Or? Uh, 11, I'm doing 11 by 17. Okay, and they're going to offer those originals up on your campaign when you do the, uh, 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 the, the Indiegogo? Uh, I might. I, oh. I, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, <laughs> who knows? We got a question here. Devil Flyer, when will Origins be launching? Not quite sure yet. Maybe in uh, within a month or so. You know, just we'll, we'll definitely let people know if you can. Just get on our Twitter. We'll be uh, we'll be uh, counting down to the launch, and also we'll tell people who's on the on the mailing list. You know, you already signed up for the mailing list, so we'll let you know like a week ahead of time when we're actually going to launch and stuff. So. But yeah, so and we're just going back to painting here, and it's gonna be eleven by seventeen, and probably I'll sell some pages. I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, I got I got tons of pages. <laughs> I just know a lot of the campaigns they make a pretty decent boost when they sell that original art. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I sold a little unique, bit. So. Yeah, you know, but unique sometimes means I don't want to buy it because it's different, and I I don't know. For a lot hmm. of people, you know. See, for me, this is like a I could buy this comic book page, and then you'd be like, I could just hang this on my wall because it's a work yeah. of art in itself. So yeah. Yep. Yep. So I mean, it's I I got some pages like uh, on the Skits of Sun Book One page campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, I sold one double page spread, uh, two uh, splash pages. And no sequential pages and the cover, so that's what, oh, that's what I okay. sold. So I had the sequential pages up there for sale, but no one bought any of them. So, huh? Yeah, we'll maybe say. just the splashes <clears throat> or look better on the wall or something. Yeah. So, so what I'm doing here is, to me, the the paint was looking too plasticky. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking an exacto blade and I'm cutting into the, the painting. Yeah, I like to do that too. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut into it and then I'm going to fill those cuts with, you know, like uh, graphite, paint, whatever. Yeah, give it some texture. Yeah, exactly. So that's something fun to do. Let's see here. Am I going to go back over? Yeah, I got the graphite back out, and I'm just kind of rubbing it, cool. get, getting a little grit to it. And uh, then I'll probably do a little rubbing out as well. Now, when you're doing a piece like this, I find that it's always hard for me to make it, like when I put it, go digital with it to to make it look like my original? Are you just kind of figuring like the original is going to be whatever I adjust it to in the computer or do you try to like match your digital file to the actual painting or do you use no, digital as part of the art process? The digital is going to be the underpainting. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it won't be used in the final. It, it's just, uh, I, I do the, uh, the little sketches and I've done a few on the channel. You can go back and see them. Um, I'm going to do all of them right on the channel as, uh, just like one, two minute, uh, videos. And, uh, you can actually go see what I'm doing and that's just going to be the under, the under painting okay. for it. And oh, we got here. Devil Flyer, I was back in number 54. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. That is so awesome. And hopefully you got your book and everything is great with it, you know. Uh, I know a lot of people have been telling us, hey, we got the book. It's awesome. Or, you know, we haven't had any bad reviews yet, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just waiting for a cash grab to come out. I'm waiting for those reviews. That's always oh, the, yeah. uh, the hard part. Because <laughs> somebody's not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> when when is that coming out? I think soon. I think Cecil already has the preview copies, so we'll okay. See. Hopefully, real soon here. Thanks, Double Fly, for getting that three book journey. I really do appreciate it. Awesome. 
Okay, so you were just sealing over that graphite that you just put on there. Yeah, so yeah, did the matte medium, and all that's doing is just sealing it in there. That way, um, when I go back in and start painting with the acrylics, it doesn't start to run and drip and stuff like that. So, yep, that's all I was doing. <clears throat> and again, this is just a test, so obviously the painting of her isn't that great. You know, I think I spent maybe an hour just kind of plopping all of this together after I screwed yeah. it up. <laughs> That's what I find. It's like I spend the most time just trying to get, uh, you know, the blends, you know, gradients, you know, to be real smooth. And yeah, that's not always easy with acrylic. <laughs> well, see, that's another thing, too. Uh, when I actually do the final pages, I probably won't do it like like the way I'm doing it here is I'm just using straight acrylic and water. Mm -hmm. Most likely I will mix my acrylic with some sort of transparent, like, uh, uh, uh what's that stuff? Uh, so a lot of people will mix uh, it with like the matte medium you're using to seal. So yeah, I mean, you can use matte medium, but I use another thing from Liquitex. It comes uh, in a smaller, smaller bottle and is it's, it's I can't uh, remember what it's called. Oh, let's see. I got um, I got the airbrush medium. I got the glazing medium. And I got... It's probably like the glazing. It's like a glazing medium. It's thick. And, um, okay. and, and it's self-leveling, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I usually I'm, use my matte medium and a retarder to kind of slow down the drying a little bit when I use it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my problem is it doesn't dry fast enough, so it's like I never. Oh use it. wow, you're the opposite. <laughs> yeah, See, I'm, I'm trying to like keep. I'm fast. trying to keep it as as uh, liquid as possible for as long as possible. <laughs> no, if I if I want it wet, I, I'll I'll use oils. So okay, I see. And, and probably I'll I'll do that on these pages too. I'll finish up with doing the 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 shebangs at the end. You know, the bright the accents. I'll probably do that with oil because it always looks better. Yeah, I can't use it because I can't stand the terps, and I just, I can't oh, do okay. it. okay. <laughs> so I want to be using oils, but I got to make acrylics work like that. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, do whatever you need to then, you know? You're using the medium the way it's supposed to be, quick drying. <laughs> well, that's what it is, you know, it's acrylic. Yeah. It's quick and it dries fast, and so you use it that way. But... Yeah, I'm just right now I'm just kind of finishing it up, throwing down a little bit. I mean, there's it doesn't really need to be. I pretty much know what I'm doing now. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it like this, blah blah blah. You know. You're on the home stretch. Yeah. <laughs> hey, all right, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Right there. Don't tell people where you live, man. <laughs> I find that strange. It used to be like you had to have like your correct when I was freelancing. You better have your correct address, your phone number, like on your website, so that the art directors could find you, or they wouldn't even look at your stuff. And oh now it's my like, gosh! Now it's like, don't do that. That's doxing. Doxing. That used to just be what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, something that I kind of do is uh, going back to, you know wanting it wet or dry a lot of times i do dry brushing too mm -hmm. and it's, you know so it's dry immediately you know yeah i like the way dry brush turns out too but it ruins a lot of brushes <laughs> yeah well for me I, all of my brushes tend to be like those cheap ones that you get at the hardware stores and stuff oh okay yeah so mine will be i'll, I'll use just the dollar ones I, yeah, I buy the cheap filberts where you get them all, like twenty of them in a bag. Exactly. Because yeah. you're just gonna ruin them anyway. <laughs> this is basically what I'm, what I'm using for yeah. doing this type of stuff. It's just a crappy one. You get like a ten of them in a bag. Yep, that's what I used to, yeah. especially with acrylics. <laughs> yep, and and then uh, if I'm doing the big painting, I use like like a one inch or a two inch brush. For, oh wow. You know, yeah, I'm I always go with enough. too big. Not brave enough for the big paintings yet. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm I, a, I I'm on nine by twelve still. <laughs> did you see the one drawing I did it live where I did like a, a four foot by ten foot painting? 
No, I didn't see that one. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I did it like uh, Kim Jong E, where oh, okay. um, I did it with uh, just an ink ink brush but i didn't do it with an ink pen i did it with like a giant brush you know like okay. a, like a big brush i started out with a big brush like this and at the end i was using one of the the brush pens like kim jong e does oh cool Very yes nice. and so it, it's cool it's a big in you know, like 10 foot painting i got it downstairs wrapped up it's on a piece of paper so yeah, I bought me like 59 by 12s, and I'm going to fill all those up, and once I do that, then I'll be brave enough to go for something a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm finishing up here with the ink pen, with the ink brush. So I'm just putting down some textures and just some eye candy, you know, just some fun stuff. Yeah. Um, textures and whoa just some uh oh the boss candy. is here <laughs> yeah i i muted you baby you're and till you get your audio right you need some headphones you're echoing so once you're good unmute yourself uh, but yeah so just kind of adding a few final things you know just finishing out the piece so it you know it's not too too busy and it looks like something that's a great piece man it looks cool you can hang that did you hang it up you got it hung up already or uh <laughs> no it, it's actually do laying you still on hear my cool. echo hang that. did you hang it up you got it hung up already or no uh, no it, it's actually do laying you still on hear my... oh baby you you got really bad echo sorry <laughs> we're we're echoing in on yours so you do you, uh, you might have your youtube on at the same time so it's coming through yeah you'll have to check that baby you're, my you're sword is bad. bent <laughs> i know and i spelled sword wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's the like... name of it it's a sword named sword <laughs> yeah exactly there you go my sword is now, actually, the painting itself is laying on the floor over here next to the <laughs> desk. So. I'm using it to catch drips. Yeah, hold on a sec. I'll go. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, there it is. Cool, oh, man. It's got dirt and dust on it. <laughs> it's laying on the floor. But just so you know, like... If you ever go to artist studios and stuff, like real artists, that's how it is. Like, they'll sit there. They got paintings that they're stepping on and everything else. It's... That's how I don't have anything hung up. I just have piles of stuff everywhere. <laughs> let, me, let me see. What text pages did you use in this? Do you know? Oh, I have no idea. It's just like old books. Sometimes you can go to, like, flea markets and junk stores, and they'll have old books that... And, and then you say, hey, do you have any crappy old books like in the back that you're just probably throwing away or you don't want to throw away? Sometimes they do from like 100 years ago, but they just don't want to throw it away because it's 100 years old, but they'll sell it to you for a couple bucks. That's usually what I get. Oh, no. You know? And I don't know what it is. I have no idea what the text is. What about now? Yeah, you sound way better now. Good job. <laughs> Yes, the boss is here. Thank you very much, Ink Spots. I appreciate that acknowledgement. <laughs> we we know we know who's in charge around here. <laughs> oh yes, you do. Hey, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for showing up. No problem. I'm just watching uh, make this great painting. Looking forward to what he's going to do <laughs> on the next book. It's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun, uh, and I really enjoyed uh, the first round of the uh, watching it, like, sort of uh, yeah. spill away with, like, a rain dance. It was, like, going, no, like, tears, tears, tears. <laughs> I, I loved that. I loved that. It was actually pretty good. Um, so, hey, chat, what's going on? Uh, thanks, Devil Flyer, so much. You've been uh, in the chat with us. Um yeah, we really appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah so that much. was like uh, drama. Like he finished it, and then it all melted away, and he had to wipe it <laughs> out. It, it was uh, it was awesome, but I mean was, that's just it. You know, you you run into some problems sometimes. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, 
Ink Spots, let us know what's going on with your book or any other future projects that you have. Yeah, what do you got going anything on? else? Okay, right now I am working on uh, Metal Mayhem Rock Boy, which is going to be my premier IP through Ink Slayer Studios. And it is about a rock and roll demigod that has the power, of, able to use the power of rock and roll and turn it into any kind of powers he wants. There's a deep subplot with uh, world ending consequences that he uh, slowly finds out. Uh, he thinks that he is a hero, and in the end, he may not be the hero he thinks he is. So no. we're, we're going to bring that uh, bring that forth and see what happens. That's going to be my first original IP. And then nice. I'm going to be working on Frog G, uh, which is a supernatural book in the realm of, like, Hellboy. Nice. Uh, and so that actually is kind of fun because it came about by somebody in the chat uh, had uh, bought a tier on Jason Bascom's uh, comic book Unhinged, and so he did a trading card based on Frog G, which is someone in the chat, and it turned out so cool that we're actually going to do a whole book, and so the book is basically based on someone out of the chat, so that's uh, pretty cool. That's awesome. So, I love yeah. Frog G. He's a nice guy, man. Yeah. That is awesome. awesome. Now, will this have a soundtrack from Kiss that says God gave rock and roll to you? Gave rock and roll, put it in your soul for everyone. Is no, that, our, that's going on for the, for the we soundtrack. We will have original music, though, by Dark Rift Comics and uh, a Death Metal Hero is going to do a rock uh, heavy metal song for it. And our theme is Rock is Not Dead. It's just been hibernating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we love it and when is that going to be launching anytime uh, soon or yeah well it's probably going to be end of the year so next couple months i'm working on pages right now and as soon as i'm ready to uh uh expose those yeah i'd love to come back on with you guys' channel when i launch and uh definitely no exposing yeah. here we don't do exposing. <laughs> we, do exposing we don't do any of that stuff ink spot so choose your words choose your and, words and <laughs> hopefully i'll be able to make it half as cool as what he's got going on here we're gonna, uh, we're gonna i know this is an incredible <laughs> process um i almost feel like the word balloon detracts from it like it like, you know, I don't know. It I think like he tragic. messed up this beautiful piece of art with these purple words. <laughs> I think so, too. And now he's catching dirt with it on the floor. That's fine. That that was done digitally. That was the only thing done digitally. Oh, okay. So it's good to go. Yeah, it ain't on the actual piece. The piece over here on the floor is, is free of text. Now, Ink Spots, I know that you, and yes, I did mean to say, kid, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, awesome. I, I, how did you really get into a lot of this stuff? Because you're saying that you didn't go to any um, higher school as far as like learning like illustration class and stuff like that, but you learned a lot. So was this all self-taught or did you just take in maybe a couple of classes here and there? Explain that. Well, uh, I did go to college, but I just went to community college because like I said, my grades weren't that great. Uh, very limited art classes. Most everything I learned was just online and from buying, you know, books and buying tutorials that other artists have online and then over the years just getting a little bit better. I mean, it probably, you know, it's and when you're not going to school and getting an education, something that should maybe only take you about four years to learn could take you a, a lifetime to be able to pick up all that, exactly. you know, because you got to find the information and, and then and apply it to what you're doing. So I've actually been a freelance illustrator for 20 plus years, but I do feel like just the last few years is really when I've come into like my own style or really starting to understand a concepts nice. and art. Yeah. So well, you've carved out, a, you know, a great career so far. You've got books, you've got people following you. You've got the whole nine yards. I mean, <laughs> it's a, I mean, that's a testament to, you know, either learning school wise or learning on your, on your own. Uh, and I think it's a blend for everyone. And uh, I think we saw that in the chat. Someone put it, you know, the motto for Nike is tried and true. Just do it. You know, you got to yeah. keep doing it all the time so you, you know, can keep up with it. That is awesome. Yeah, it's just a lot of trial and error. And uh, like like what he did in this painting, it was a lot of trial and error. And like he, he 
you know, like when he put down the, the wrong medium and it washed away and then he just got back in there with the acrylic and then he fixed it and, and it looks cool. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's like, you, that's like, uh, what your art career is. You just keep throwing stuff at the canvas until something <laughs> sticks and works for you. Oh so, no, yeah. Mr. Bill. That's exactly what I felt like for <laughs> going away. So, oh no. Mr. Yeah, Bill. he was fine. She, she was fine. I, I brought her back. No big deal. Body's brought her back cool. to life. Well, yeah. Inkbox, I'm, I'm going to be going. I have a show to prepare for for tonight. Well, not really a show, but I have uh, a new horror channel uh, with my production company, Verse Films Productions. Shout out to you guys out there. Um, we're doing a video a day, every day for 31 days for Halloween. Cool. And tonight, or this week, actually, they're broken up by weeks. And this week is horror video games and horror comics. So oh. we're really excited. We're doing the Evil Within tonight. Mm. <laughs> so oh, if you yeah. ever play any video games, guys, yeah. make sure... Uh, that you check us out. I don't have my 100 subscribers just yet, so I can't give you the all-inclusive, like, oh, go here. You just have to look us up on YouTube, Verse yep. Films Production. So hopefully yep. we'll get some subscribers, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, definitely go subscribe to it. Go check it out. Uh, she needs a little help to get going. That's how it is when you first start a channel. It's like, boom, you know, I've only been doing it for a month. Like, we need subscribers, so go on over yeah. there and subscribe to them. Uh, yeah, and YouTube also, uh, we're, we're doing <laughs> an actual horror comic on the channel. So uh, we're doing our own horror comic, at least I am. And so I'm really excited about that because, like, horror is my thing. I mean, skits can tell you, like, I'm like the, your horror girl from cartoons to video yep. games to T-shirts and concerts. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Awesome. <laughs> So on your channel, did you guys actually film some little shorts and stuff? Is that what you're premiering or like some I, little no, well, short films? I, I, well, we do have a short film that's up okay. there called the, the Dead of Night. But no, we're doing uh, just like a regular uh, channel show. Like I've uploaded some videos and we're just talking uh, specifically about like a video game. So we'll talk about the evil uh, within tonight. Next, you know, last week was Screentober Music Week. So we talked about like Jaws and The Exorcist and like, you know, the iconic music. And next week we're going to do all franchise. So, you know, of course, Halloween Kills. Great. Uh, you know, and then we're doing yeah. like, you know, all those franchise horror. So we're just going to do like a little talk about it. And then we're going to talk about sexy costumes and candy the last week. So if you got a sexy <laughs> costume, you let us know. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can I can throw in some spandex. I'll get it. I'll get it going. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see that. Yeah, green man. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, take care, guys. Have a good one, uh, Ink Spots, and we can't wait. Yeah, we'll definitely have you on all of the shows. And everyone out there, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Thanks a lot for coming on, baby. You're doing an awesome job today. You look good. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. There we go. We got the interlude. <laughs> yeah, that came out great, man. I really like it. I yeah, it. you know, it was just for fun. You know, I was just like, you know, I, I, you just got to figure out your process. You got to figure out what you're going to do. You don't want to sit down to the first page and then be like, well, what am I going to do? You got to have a process already put down, you know? For me, I just find I, uh, doing the same process every time <laughs> <laughs> I get a wild hair and I just got to do something else. <laughs> well, well, these are going to be quick. Uh, they're going to be, uh, I'm doing a page a day and there's 48 pages. So hopefully I'll have it done in about a month or two. That's how quick I'm going to be doing it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're going to put the... Uh, yeah. Well, th and then I want to roll right into uh, Skits the Sun book, too. So we got we got a lot going on right now. Now, are you going to do the sun the same as you did the first one with a yeah. lot of digital? Okay. Yeah, I'm doing changing it up. You know, I'm doing a little bit of, uh, you know, I'm doing the pencils and the coloring, the inks and coloring, and then digital stuff, the painting, digital painting. And what was Karshina's YouTube again? It is uh, Verse Films Productions. Verse Films. Yeah, like verse, like Bible verse, 
I yeah. think it's yeah. I found it. Oh, yeah, man. it should be the only one on there. She's got a couple videos that are really cool over there. She's got that mini, that short film that she did that's been in some uh, uh, shows, you know. Uh, cool. I, what I'm those, like movie shows. I, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Another subscriber, baby. You got another. And also Devil Flyer. Devil Flyer says they're going to subscribe. So there you go. We got two more. Cool. One at a time. That's how it was when we started Skits Comic. You know, it's just like one at a time. You just got to, you know. Yeah, I think you, you should take off. Like your next one, I mean, you've delivered on the first one. And now people can see how cool it is. And so it should just be... You know, rolling downhill from here and yeah. picking up more people as it goes. So it's going to be great. Yeah, hopefully. That's that's yeah. the goal. Yeah, film festivals. That's what they're called. They're, sorry. Yeah, she has a, you know, the Dead of Night's been in a, a few film festivals. And she's also got a music video on there, which uh, her mom doesn't like because it's too sexy. <laughs> so everyone should probably go see that. People love that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Right on, dude. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you coming out on a Sunday. It's really kind of you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, it was great to see your process. I always like to see what other artists are doing, and I uh, actually picked up a couple of uh, little tricks that will actually help me uh, going Good. forward with my stuff. The thing about being an artist, you never stop learning. You're always yeah. learning new things or finding out something cool or exploring a different... Uh, part of art and yeah. uh, that's the way it always should be if you're an artist so yep uh that's actually something that we're going to be doing we're going to be launching the website probably in the next week and uh we're going to be doing a lot more of that sort of stuff where i actually tell people more about the tricks of the trade you know i'll get into some oils i'll get into colored pencils i'll get into all different types of stuff i'm working on uh uh liquid graphite right now uh, oh, have cool. you ever worked? Have you ever worked I've with that? Never worked with liquid graphite. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot like ink, uh, but it's super thick. It's real, real thick, and then you water it down, you know, and then you use it like you would ink, you know, okay. doing washes and stuff. That's what I I you can find a lot. Like it used to be opposite. Like you could find a lot of traditional tutorials, but not a lot of digital. But now everything's about digital, so yeah. it is kind of hard. It's a definite uh, an a need out there for for people to be able to learn the traditional techniques because that stuff will eventually die out if everybody goes digital so yeah get it out there yeah and you know sometimes you just got to get out from behind the, the computer you know yeah i mean with my regular job i'm sitting in front of the computer all day so i just you know i, I wanted to do something where i was like i'm just going to be on a piece of paper and whatever happens happens yeah, sometimes the only good thing about digital is like sometimes you just don't feel like, you know, prepping your art area and filling up water, containers of water and mixing your paints. It's like, ah, I just want to put something down right now. I'm just yeah. going to open Photoshop up. <laughs> well, I tend to be pretty quick when it comes to that sort of stuff. Uh, we got the art studio. I'm in the, yeah, I was the top say, here. You got a great studio mm -hmm. here. So Yeah, this is the top. You know, this has got, you know, the couch, the books, the computers, uh, some drawing The creepy tables. skits costume over in the Yeah, corner. right over there in the corner. <laughs> and uh, downstairs is where all the painting and filming and stuff like that happens. So. Yeah, that's very cool. My studio is like a 10 by 10 room, so I got to have everything kind of put up or I won't be able to sit in here. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think I'm going to finish this out with telling people, uh, did, did you have anything that uh, you wanted to tell people before we get going? Like, you know, where they can find you and all that? You know, I always forget to ask people that. Like, where can they find you, you know? Yeah. On Twitter, you can you can get me right there at, at, my, at my Evil Robot. And once you get there, there's a link to my YouTube channel because uh, – Ink Spots was an old uh, 60s band, and so if you look up Ink Spots, that's all you'll find. But uh, you can find my channel, Be Warned. I sing a lot of uh, off-color humor songs and things like that. So, <laughs> Yeah, and so, I also got his stuff down in the, uh, the uh, description area. So if you oh, cool. need to go look there, you can uh, just click on it, and it'll take you right to him. Oh, great. So, Thank you. 
yeah, of course. Yeah, and, other than that, right now I'm just in uh, process mode, getting my book done, ready, getting it ready to launch. So that's all. There you go. Yeah, yeah. look out for it. You don't have an early sign up for it? Not yet. I wanted to get, I want to get like 12 pages done, so I have really something that that people can look at to see if. Nah what the finished product's gonna look like. I'm kinda like you are in your testing mode, trying to figure out, I have the pages roughed out, I'm just not sure how I wanna finish them yet, so I'm trying to get that process done, so. Cool, cool. All right, well, everything here for me, uh, you know, go over to Twitter, uh, we're Skits Comic on Twitter, Skits Comic on YouTube, which is where you're at right now. Also, uh, Skits Comic on uh, Instagram, uh, go check out Karshina's stuff over at uh, First Films Productions. They're on uh, Twitter as well, First Films Production. And also Karshina J over on uh, Twitter. And come get some. You know, come get some. <laughs> and uh, also, we got Skits Book still. The campaign's still open. We will be closing it at some point soon. So go get your books while you still can. Got three book journey here they turned out fantastic i'm really happy and proud of these things so, yeah they look beautiful dude thanks there was something that. behind those right each book is a different ending or what is the what was the yeah so that? we we got three books and each book has a variant story inside so there's each book has six different pages inside plus uh, there's about 18 different panels per book as well. Cool. So there's little things going on that actually hint to the future books. So. Very cool. I think you're the only one that's done something like that. So that's very cool. Yeah, it's like a choose your own adventure. You know, we got we got variant yeah. stories. You know, Man, I, I just I love that. Didn't you love those books? <laughs> choose your own adventure. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is, I never actually. I didn't even know about them. Someone, like, I told somebody what I was doing. They were like, oh, you mean like a choose your own adventure story? I was like, what? I was like, I didn't know that existed. Yeah, they were my so, favorite when I was a kid. Oh, I know. Jeez, man. <laughs> and then oh, also there's, we got drawings on the back from uh, Kent Williams. So that's cool. We got different. Those are beautiful, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's pencil drawings. And uh, so, yeah, these books are awesome. Go get them. And, uh. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.